Hello and welcome to Is The Bites. Hope you're well. Thank you once again for joining us. Very much appreciated. And in today's pack program, I'm going to be looking at the next target for Bitcoin. Today is a breakout day. We're breaking out so far to 65,000. I'm going to be having a look at exactly what the next target will be. I'll also be looking at the background to what's happening around Bitcoin. And that means we're going to be having a look at the ETFs and where they are currently, as well as look at the wider markets and what's happening there. And we'll then have a look at the 60 day cycle to see exactly Exactly how the current price action is fitting into the template of the 60 day cycle as well as the larger time frames for Bitcoin and if that sounds interesting then you know exactly what to do get yourself a cup of tea sit yourself down eyes on the screen and let's get cracking And this is my cup of tea that I'll be sharing with you during the making of this video. And I can tell you this is no ordinary cup of tea. This is an incredible brain food. And one day I'll give you the recipe for this. But before I begin, the usual polite reminder, please remember everything in my videos is just for educational purposes. So please always do your wider research before you make any investment decisions or any swing trade decisions. So I'm going to use the Fibonacci retracement to look at the levels at which Bitcoin can come up to after it's left the all time high. And I'm using the linear scale rather than the log scale here because that's the one that we can elicit the most information from. The two levels to look out for is the 1.618, this one here, and the 2.272. So in the first cycle, when we broke up above the previous all-time high, the first meaningful correction we got was at the 1.618 here. And this was about a 25% correction. As you can see here, 24%. If we move to the second cycle, this time, the price went above the all-time high, broke up above that, and came up to the 2.272 before we had a meaningful correction. This time round, instead of the 1.618, it came up to the 2.618 instead at this point and had a correction down to the 2.72 and even all the way back to the 1.618 to retest that base there. And that correction was around about 40%. And in the last cycle, back in 2018, once again, we came up to the 2.272. At exactly that point, we got a correction all the way back to the 1.618. So you can see that the three particular figures that are really important of where we can expect some sort of a correction once we go above the 69,000 are these figures here, the 2.272, the 1.618 and the 1.272. So this is the region we're really looking for. Now, I know some of you will be thinking that's only three data points, but that's all we've got. In the absence of a lot more data points, we have to use whatever tools we can get in order to elicit the most amount of information. We know with Bitcoin that Bitcoin has a very high affinity to go to the 1.618 time and time again. And the first level to note, as per the first cycle, is the 1.272. And that is currently at 83,700. So we'll wait and see how the price interacts with this level here. But the main one, I would say, is the 1.618. And that is at 102,200. And should we punch through that without any meaningful correction, then you know for sure, as sure as you can be in an uncertain market. Remember, there are no certainties or guarantees, just probabilities. So if we don't get a meaningful Meaningful correction here or here, the probability is incredibly high that we're going to get a correction at this point here, the 2.272, and that is at 137,000. So these are your three levels to really look out for as per the historical perspective. And I would say the 1.618 has the edge because it's happened twice at that point. Okay, so I'm going to try and paint a narrative of exactly what's going on in the background so we get the overall picture and with a higher degree of probability, we can work out which direction the market is going to go to and what is the most likely narrative Bitcoin is going to play up to. I'm going to have a look at this chart by Plan B. So thank you very much indeed to him. And I know some people discredited him in the last cycle. All I can say is that there is nothing that's 100% accurate. So we have to elicit as much information from whatever source we can. And on the whole, this has worked incredibly well. Because if you look at this particular chart, this is the Bitcoin cycle. And these are our peaks that we had in all of the three cycles so far. And the beauty about this is that it tells us exactly what phase of the market we're in. So when we move from the green zone to the blue zone, we know that we have now bottomed out. That's a confirmation. And the same happened here. As soon as we got the blue dot, that was confirmation that we'd bottomed out. Same here. And the same one more time 
at this point, at the end of 2022. Similarly, once we got out of the blue phase, the first red dot was the signal that we were in this parabolic move to the end of the bull market. Similar thing happened here. The first red dot, that marked the beginning of the parabolic move to the upside. And in the last cycle, in 2021, exactly the same, the red dot, and that was a signal for the start of the parabolic move. And as you can see now, we've just hit the first red dot. So we've got the record of one, two, three previous markets telling us exactly what this red dot means over here. Everybody can make up their own mind. I'm just here to present the information to you. Whether you want to believe it or not, that's your decision. And what this red dot really means is that the accumulation phase has now ended. No more easy buying opportunities in orderly and slowly increasing markets. And what the red dot really signifies is that the bull market has really now started properly. And as per previous cycles, we should see some kind of a 10 months of a parabolic move coming up. And interspersed with that parabolic move, we could well see minus 30% drops. So a lot of fun and a lot of excitement ahead, but it's an arduous journey full of challenges as well. And just remember one thing about the markets. The markets are there to shake out the weak hands and for the money to move from impatient hands to the patient hands. And everybody has to decide what category they're going to fall into because the emotions are going to run very, very high and a lot of people are going to do something that they probably don't even plan to do. So you really have to buckle up here and stay strong to whatever strategy that you're following. And while the markets don't have to repeat, they do rhyme in many, many ways. And these are our only guides while keeping an open and neutral stance. So therefore, what we can do is to expect 10 months of a parabolic rise from now on, interspersed with some meaningful corrections. But from my perspective, I'm very happy to accept whatever the market will give me. And if that means it's something completely different, thank you very much indeed. Okay, so I'm going to talk about the ETF story and the narrative that is playing out in the background of the current Bitcoin price action. And I've not really ever seen this scenario play out. And that is that the OTC cupboard is completely bare with Bitcoins. So there are virtually no Bitcoins in the OTC for the billionaires out there to buy. And the last time this happened was back in 2019 when we had that big move to the 14,000 level. So what happens when there are no Bitcoins in the OTC, the buyers have to then come into the market and that adds to the overall increase in the demand, which should be reflected in higher prices. So to make you aware about the ETFs, we have Morgan Stanley here about to offer spot Bitcoin ETFs. So we can see the fuel for the Bitcoin price going much higher is already playing out in the background here. We also know that Bitcoin ETFs are expected to be launched in Hong Kong by mid 2024. So we can see the buildup of the ETFs all around the world. And this is one of many around the world where the ETFs are really getting going. And the one that's already launched is the Brazilian ETF. That's been launched by BlackRock here. And so far, ETF market secures 4% of total Bitcoin supply. So since January the 11th, the ETF market has already grown by 4% of the total supply. And we also know that many of the European countries are on the verge of actually launching their own ETFs, including the one here in UK. So this is the background of what's happening since the launch of the ETFs on January the 11th. And if we have a look at the Bitcoin ETF overview with all the inflows into the ETFs. So if we had a look at the last seven days here, we've lost about 16,000 in grayscale, but we've gained 34,000 with the BlackRock ETF, 12,000 with the Fidelity, 3,800 with ARK, etc., etc. You can see they're all in green figures here. So overall, the net is around about 10,000 Bitcoins are being bought up per day. And we know the current supply is 900 with the Bitcoin miners. So the only thing that's really holding back Bitcoin and making even bigger moves than what we're already seeing is the grayscale selling at this point here. And sooner or later, this is going to turn from the red to the green. Okay, so we've had a look at what's going on in the background. Let's have a look at the wider markets to tell us exactly what direction they're telling us that the markets are going. And in particular, the effect is going to have on the Bitcoin price. If we have a look at the S&P first, on the monthly chart, you can see we're just having a breakout. So the last month's candle, the February candle, was the first breakout candle. And so far, the current March candle has already gone above the February candle. So this is confirming the bullish trend that's going on in the S&P. And I'm expecting this to continue running for the next 12 to 24 months. 
Obviously, there will be corrections along the way, but the general trend should be up over the next 12 to 24 months because we're expecting interest rates to fall, which will increase the liquidity into the markets. And with the artificial intelligence narrative playing out in the background to drive the growth forward within the markets, we can expect the S&P to go to 6,000 and beyond over the next 12 to 24 months. And if you watched my last week's video, I put this 60-day cycle framework on the daily chart and we can see quite clearly that we've made a right translated cycle already and and I said that there's a lot of room for this market to go much higher. So we can see now we're making even more higher highs from the previous two points. And with the 60 day cycle ending around about the first week of April, we can expect this to go up much further. And then we can expect some sort of a correction into the 60 day cycle and for the beginning of the new cycle over here. So everything looking like a green light for the S&P to move forward. And what we have with gold is the highest weekly close ever. And that closed at 2082. And if you look at the daily chart, we mentioned last week that we broke the support for gold over here. And there was going to be a likely retest of the previous support as resistance. And recapturing this will mean that we're going to be testing the all time highs here at around 2100. And the fact that we should normally have got a rejection at this point, but instead got a recapture of it here above the support, that is a very good sign that we're likely to go much further up here. So this is really a good sign that there is a big move to come with gold. And if we zoom out a little bit, we'll be coming to this neckline. So this was our first test of that neckline at around 1900. This was a second test. You can call that the third test. And this will be our fourth test in this region now. So the chances are with a higher probability, we're going to break through to much higher levels with gold. And if you've been watching my videos, you'll know that I drew this cup and handle pattern here. Incredibly bullish cup and handle pattern. And this price action has broken out of the handle part of it. And we're coming to the end of this ascending triangle. So everything's really setting up for a big move for gold over here. And that is despite the fact that more and more people who are in the gold ETFs are moving to the Bitcoin ETFs. And this really highlights the demand for the Bitcoin ETFs. The first ETF for gold was back in 2004. It's taken 20 years for gold to get to this level here at 92 billion. And yet for the Bitcoin ETFs, we're virtually halfway there within a period of just two months. And if we move on to the dollar, we can see that these two gravestone doji candles, shooting stars, whatever you want to call them, these two candles were a very good signal that we're on our way down here. So we've got rejected at this point, And I would expect fully to come back and find some support around these levels at 101. So once again, the markets are really playing out for a big move not just for the wider markets, but for Bitcoin as well. So how does that relate to Bitcoin and the current price action? If we have a look at the monthly chart, it gives us some clue as to the direction of the market and why we're breaking up at the moment. So these are the bodies of the candles at the top here. And if you go across there, you can see that we are now currently breaking above that level. And in classical charting, you would at this point measure from the bottom of the market to that neckline. And that gives you an approximate 300% move that should be coming over here. I'm not saying it's going to happen. I'm just eliciting information from the charts and then extrapolating it to give us some sort of a target. So from the breakout, that would mean around about a price of around 240,000. So only time will tell, but these are things just to keep in mind and be aware of the certain targets. We've had a look at the targets from a Fibonacci retracement point of view. And this is another way of looking at another target. And if we move on to the weekly chart, we've just had our highest close on the weekly chart of 63,154. And that is the highest close since November 2021. So this was the top of the market. And we've just closed the highest candle since then. So we can see the whole narrative is building up that we're going to go much higher from where we are now. The only thing I can see on the weekly chart, which says that we should be cautious is that if you look at the Bollinger Bands, the current price action has gone beyond the upper Bollinger Band here. And usually whenever we get that, the price tends to come back in as over here and as over here. It rode it up to this point, but eventually it came back in before it gathers the fuel for the next move up. So, but that doesn't mean that it can't go a bit further, but somewhere along the line, we're going to find some sort of a consolidation to come back in within the Bollinger Bands here. So despite that bit of caution, it seems like the Bitcoin price is like a bullet train and I wouldn't want to be standing in front of it. And there's still a lot of people 
trying to short this market. All I would say is good luck with that. I wouldn't be betting against the Bitcoin price going to the all-time highs this week. And we are coming so close to our second target that we set at the beginning of 2023. So when the price was down here at 15,000, we set these two targets. The first one is this yellow line, the RSI MTF line, that what we can expect in 2023 was to come and hit the yellow line. And this is exactly what we did. And this is where we was consolidated for quite a while. But our second target was the 350 simple moving average, which is the red line here, the pi cycle red line. And that is now currently at 67,000. And we're just 2,000 away. And the significance of that is incredibly clear. And that was a target that we set based on the historical perspective. Those people who think that the charts don't repeat themselves will do well to observe this. While we don't know what's going to happen in the future, we can base the future on some of the signs here. So we can see that before the first halving, this red line, the price came and hit the red line here. In the second halving, just before the halving here, we hit the red line there. And in the third halving, we hit the red line here. And just based on those three data points, we set a target at this point that there is a high likelihood based on the historical perspective that we're going to get our price action for Bitcoin to come and hit the red line. And at many points along there, it seemed very unlikely. And once again, all the credit goes to the charts and their historical patterns from which we can elicit some information, which gives us an indication that when you extrapolate that information, we can set targets which have a higher probability of being met. And once again, just based on that historical perspective, we have been working out whether we are going to have a left translated cycle or a right translated cycle. Because if you look at the first cycle here, the all time highs were always met after the halving. So this was the first cycle. This was the second cycle. After the halving, that's when the all time high broke out. Third halving, all time high. After the halving here, the price broke out well after that point. But currently, before the halving, we are going to be breaking out with a higher probability here. And that tells us, and if you've been watching my videos, you'll know that we've been talking about a left translated cycle and that the biggest signal for a left translated cycle will be if we come and beat the all time high before the halving. So instead of this four year cycle to play out and top out at the end of 2025, this increases a very high probability to top out to top out before the end of 2024. And you can use this red dot here that we are about 10 months away or within 10 months towards the top of the bull market. But as I say to everybody, keep an open mind, always keep neutral, flexible and fluid. Because when we get towards the top of this market, we do have our exit indicators to tell us exactly when it's topping out. And I'll be presenting those as time goes on. So what we have now currently playing out with a higher probability to top out between now and the end of 2024. And finally, our favorite chart, the 60 day cycle. And this current cycle started here on the 23rd of January, and we're currently 41 days into that cycle. And this cycle seems to be playing out absolutely perfectly. We've moved into the midpoint of the cycle, this white line here. We've consolidated into it, and now we've moved much higher, creating a right translated cycle, but there's still quite a lot of room to go. So what we can expect is for further price action towards the 60 day cycle before we get some sort of a correction into the 60 day cycle low. And then we have a new cycle to start one more time. So everything seems to be playing out absolutely perfectly with the background information as I presented to you and the wider markets looking bullish. And that's also feeding into a very bullish picture for Bitcoin. And if you have a look at the volume, you can see that this particular move here, we've had really very good volume. So the move has been matched up and backed up by the volume here. And overall, what we can say with this picture is that there is just so much demand with very little supply. And as one very successful trader, Mike Minervini said, you want to get on board when institutional money is pouring into a stock and lifting it significantly higher. And that's exactly what's been happening since January the 11th. Okay, so I'm going to leave it there. I hope you found value in the video. If you did, then please do remember to like and to subscribe if you haven't already done so. If you've got any comments, questions or suggestions, then leave them in the comments below. Until the next time, take care, stay safe, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.